Welcome to another time-lapse video. I'll be painting Paul Jacques as Captain Lobato of the Starship Brain Cross as part of my Star Trek fan fiction Captain series. Uh, I'd like to start by talking a little bit about drawing, and I have here some books that were really helpful for me in getting started with drawing the human head. These are, uh, I think, three of the most highly regarded authors of these types of books. We have here George Bridgman, Bern Hogarth, and Andrew Loomis. And I'll put links to where you can get these books. And these are really designed for illustrators, but they do have um, a lot of useful construction in them. Um, I don't really use these techniques outright for creating fine art, but I, uh, I sort of incorporate them into my drawing method. And uh, as we get into a little bit of how I approach that, I'll describe where some of this comes in. I don't know that anybody really uses these techniques outright to draw from life or draw from references, but um, I, I think a lot of artists do incorporate some aspect of the um, structure. So I'll talk a little bit about how I approach this as I start here with my portrait of Paul. And uh, again, I'm on a tone canvas. I'm drawing with a brush and I'm putting in the heights of some key markers like the eye line, the nose, the mouth, the chin, and the hairline, and the top of the head. But to find the features, I use angles for this. And this is very similar to if anyone's ever done any flooring work or put in a subfloor and you have like a weird angled corner. In order to get the cuts right for that, if you tried to measure it, you wind up with these big gaps and you have to fill it in with you know, trim, or if it's tile, you have to do a big grout edge. But if you actually take those angles from the wall out to uh, another boundary, and you cross a boundary, you get a perfect cut. And that's really what I'm doing to find these features. I'm using angles from the tip of the nose out to where the eye line is. And it doesn't really matter what the shape of the eye is in the eye socket, because those angles will always find where it's supposed to cross the end. And that's really how I I build the structure from the inside out. And then I'll go in and I will add things like Riley Rhythms from Frank Riley, who does not have a book, but there are some students of his that did write books of his. Um, and then I, I sort of build outward from there. Uh, and that's how I start my drawing and try to get you know, uh, enough of a likeness to start working in, in masses with paint. And here I'm just putting in a, uh, a black background. And this is not as transparent as some of the other backgrounds. I felt like the image worked really well with a, a very um, opaque black background. And I'm just adding a couple of blacks in here and there, and now I'm starting to work on the shadows. And you know, when I start working on these masses, I do what I was uh, trained to do. I start working from dark to light. Um, I often build a, a palette that is a value string for you know, the local shadow color and a value string for um, the local color and light. And uh, once I go ahead and work from dark to light using those um, little puddles of paint, I can always sort of push it uh, a little bit hotter or a little bit cooler. Um, I could add a little bit of uh, you know, uh, reinforced shadow. Um, and I tend to work a little darker than I need to because I could always push things lighter. And um, when I try to capture someone's likeness, like in, in this case, you know, Paul has this great expression on his face and it was really tough for me to, to try and capture that. Uh, I had this fear of overdoing that and having it look too much like a caricature. So I actually downplayed that smile just a little bit. He's got just this great smile going on. And uh, I, I wanted to try and capture as much of it as I could without pushing it too far um, uh, because of the, you know, the, the difficulty in achieving a likeness in the first place. I didn't want to wind up making it a little harder on myself to have it look realistic. Um, so once I start putting in the masses for the face, I start finding some of the edges need to be refined to make sure the side of the head looks more realistic. I reinforce some of the darks and the shadows here. Um, and then I can play with the light to start pushing things a little lighter, um, adding some highlights and 
redrawing like the, the size of the nose, for example, and trying to find out how the highlight on the left cheek, which is on our right, kind of helps reinforce that effect of the smile. Um, and the last thing I'll do here is I'll just start working on the lips and getting that sorted out. And that's when I start trying to figure out how those lips help define that expression a little bit. And again, I didn't push it really as far as maybe I could have because I was a little bit worried about the, um, you know, the character kind of problem. Uh, and you saw me pushing things a little redder because there's a lot of red in Paul's face. And now I'm just going down to the fabric and there's these great folds in the fabric. A lot of painters love painting these kinds of folds in fabric because it's kind of easy to do and uh, it has a nice effect. Um, so I'm working here just in plain black and I had a little bit of highlight in the black later on, but getting this red color was tough. Um, getting that to match and I wind up sort of just blocking in uh, sort of a local color and then I'll start pushing that a little bit darker in some areas and pulling back towards light and getting some highlights in there. Um, but uh, this was just such a fun thing to do because it was such a great photo with a, with a great expression. I just wanted to make sure I could capture that as best I could. Um, and the last thing I did here, I filled in the, um, the uh, Star Trek emblem Oh, which I, I think in this uniform, it may actually be a communicator as well. Uh, and uh, that was a lot of fun to try and get that look metallic. And you see me here putting in some highlights into the, into the garment just so that looks like it flows better. Um, and the last thing I'll do is I'll start working on the hair and getting the hair color right was tough. Believe it or not, I mean, it was just, you would think, well, it's just gray. That must be easy. It's not just gray. There's a lot going on in there. I was really trying to get that to read like it had volume. Um, and once I have that, it's a lot easier for me to now everything's covered up. I can go and, you know, flick my eyes back and forth and see where I need to reinforce some shadows and, uh, had a little bit of highlights around the eyes to make sure they look round and do things like a, uh, a second look at the hair, add some highlights there. And I do a little more work on the nose here, bring in that little bit lighter, um, just to add these little finishing touches. And that just is something that's much easier to do at the end when I can sort of see everything and compare everything. And again, my goal here is just to make a likeness. This is not going to be a photographic reproduction, but I wanted to do as good a job I can for Paul and the final touches on the hair uh, sort of bring that volume out. And this is the final painting. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and set your notifications. And I can be found on the internet at robertosuzuki.art and on Instagram at roberto underscore suzuki underscore art and on Facebook at fb.com slash roberto suzuki art. Thank you.